Welcome Michael Casuto of Denso to a brief video demonstration of the Japan Unix desktop soldering system sold and serviced by Fancorp Industries. Um, Mike will take a quick uh, brief overview of all the major components and a couple of uh, options, uh, accessories on the robot and then we'll take a brief pause and watch it solder uh, a couple of your assemblies. So uh, we'll go right into uh, looking at the major components. We're starting with our base robot with the X table uh, that moves front and uh, rear direction, forward and back, uh, with a temporary fixture and two of your assemblies. Um, the next major component we have up above that is our soldering Y axis uh, head, which takes care of the Y left to right movement our Z axis, up and down movement, and rotational axis. Um, below the head, you see we have uh, our actual soldering head, which is our iron and graduated angle setter, um, our nitrogen cap and uh, needle, which delivers the solder to the uh, tip. These are also uh, very good for a quick change out on the tip. If you need to, you can remove the entire heater block with a different tip, and the change out is uh, less than 30 seconds. Um, up above here to the left of our soldering head, we have our solder feeder, which uh, delivers the solder at the speed and amount that we uh, program through the uh, teach pendant. Spool of solder held on the top, fed through a, a tube which is available in different sizes depending on the diameter of your solder and then it's delivered to a, a needle which is also uh, delivered through a needle rather to the tip which is also available in different sizes. Um, while we're in this area of the X table and, and the robot head we can look just below the robot head and see our standard equipment blow off uh, slash vacuum um, device which we can program the uh, robot tip to come down into this slot uh, at any time we want in the program as many times as we want and blow off excess solder. It is then vacuumed away through a corrugated hose and uh, deposited in a little vacuum receptacle up here. Now just to the right of this little vacuum receptacle we have our solder controller which turns on our uh, heater on and off manual feeds for the solder feed uh, stop and clear errors also shows us if we have a solder run out uh, error by these indicator lights or if we had a solder jam problem um, and all of the all the programming information um, as far as the solder condition is stored there also um, right next to that we have a freestanding nitrogen generator which takes 80 psi shop air, converts it to nitrogen, it is then fed out of the nitrogen generator and uh, into the soldering tip where, the, where there is a, uh, a nipple on the cap which can blow nitrogen around the tip. Very useful for lead free soldering, more um, essential than uh, useful. Um, Lead free soldering can be very difficult to work with without nitrogen. Um, that's the, most of the major components. Now we have a few other components that we'll go over. Uh, to our right here of our robot, we have uh, a couple of extras uh, options. One is a uh, brush cleaner. We can program the iron to run over and dip down into the rotating brushes to clean it. Um, Next to that, we also have an XYZ position correction mechanism, which will um, automatically adjust in the event of a crash or a tip change out, a slight difference. On very critical applications, very nice. It will uh, recheck original position and automatically correct. A couple other options that we also offer for the robot is the nitrogen preheater, which can preheat the nitrogen to give you a preheating effect on your part, and also solder wire preheater, which can preheat the solder wire to avoid uh, uh, thermal shock to the solder which could result in solder balls and splattering. 
Uh, finally, uh, last but not least, we have our remote start switch and uh, emergency stop button. And next to that, we have our teaching pendant, which all of our program XYZ rotational um, position data is entered and saved here. All of our soldering condition data, uh, speed and feed amounts uh, of the solder are stored here. And we also set our temperature for our soldering iron, all done through the teach pendant. Um, I think we've pretty much covered all the basics and most of the options, so uh, we, I believe we'll take a brief pause here. Uh, one other option that I failed to point out, I'm sorry, is we offer also a little closed circuit camera, uh, S-video uh, camera, and uh, that is also displayed uh, on a 17-inch monitor. And uh, when we're soldering your parts, we may uh, do one live on the part and then do another on the uh, actual monitor. Uh, that, that pretty much concludes all the uh, components, and thank you. Hi, uh, Francisco Alvarez. Uh, we're going to do a brief uh, video demonstration of the robot uh, soldering one of your assemblies, but I wanted to just mention a couple of things that we, uh, we had to do. was um, We put a slight uh, J-bend in the black lead in order to get it to uh, lay on the pad for good uh, contact. Um, other than that, you can see it's a very simple fixture. Um, obviously, with a dedicated fixture, we could um, get um, multiple assemblies and um, much better results, too, because of the uh, repeatability. Uh, another thing I wanted to quick uh, mention is that you had sent a roll of solder that is a SAC alloy, um, 20 thousandths diameter, 2.2% flux. Um, I was uh, going to run that, but it's a little. I feel it's a little large diameter. Uh, so I'm running a SAC alloy that is the 20 thousandths diameter and is a 3% no clean flux which is really um, recommended by the robot manufacturer to uh, a minimum of 3% flux core wire so um, we could probably make it work with 2.2 uh, your, your solder as well uh, but we'd have to run some extra tests um, there was one other thing here too um, tips yes we are going to run a um, one cycle with this tip and then we're going to run another cycle with a slightly larger tip to see if we can um, achieve a faster cycle time. Right now I believe that the cycle time on this particular part with this tip for, the, for both connections is about 13.8 seconds. But we're still within your uh, target time but I feel that we can uh, shorten the cycle time even uh, make it even faster with a slightly larger tip. So we'll, we'll take a brief pause, we'll run this part, then we'll pause again and run another part with a slightly larger tip. Okay, let's watch it solder apart. We're going to blow clean, you probably see it on the monitor better. Okay, cycle time was 14.5 seconds. We'll take a brief pause uh, and we'll try a slightly larger tip and see if we can reduce cycle time even further. Okay, we're going to now run uh, a second uh, part on the video here. We went to a slightly larger tip. We did run a test part prior to this video. We were able to uh, actually uh, cut the cycle time down by two, uh, just about two full seconds. We went from 14.8 to 12.9 for the uh, one complete assembly. So uh, without further ado, we'll hit the start button and watch it solder another part. Okay, cycle time, like I said, 12.9 seconds for two connections. Looks pretty good. And thank you very much.